Welcome to the Recruitment Rollercoaster Podcast. My name is Hisham Aziz, and today I'm pretty. I'm gonna be really annoyed if I didn't remember. But I'm pretty sure I'm joined by the the very first Brummy on the uh, Recruitment Rollercoaster Podcast, um, and that is Tony Bates, who is a managing director for IDEX Consulting. Thank you for joining me, sir. Thank you very much. How are you? I'm very well. Good. good. Birmingham's the sixth most investable city in Europe. Just oh, so you know. straight in there. Just so you know. Plug I've it in. Got there. to promote Birmingham here, haven't I? Class. Um, look, you know where I like to start. Let's get into it, mate. How the hell did you get into recruitment? Well, quite unusual because I wanted to get into it. Yeah. Um, from the start, so I um, I got turned down for a recruitment job when I was 20. Okay. Um, Why did I, you get I, turned down? Did you get I feedback? No, I had no blazer on. <laughs> So I'm seriously. So you the wasn't guy, smart the, enough. No, no, I wasn't smart enough. So the guy said, "Look, why have you come with no blazer?" He said, "You can't do recruitment like that." What did you wear? Um, literally just um, trousers and a shirt. And the guy rejected me. And um, but it kind of motivated me to get back into it. Then he said, mm. "I didn't have the sales skills and no blazer." So I went and got the sales <laughs> skills That's and, bought, and bought a blazer. Really? Um, tried again. I applied for a role in the newspaper. Really? So old school. That shows how long I've been doing it. Jesus Christ. Um, did six months at a small independent firm in financial services, which is where I'd worked previously, mm. um, and then joined a, a national that kept approaching me. My friend worked at a national firm yeah. in the same market, and every time he filled a job that I didn't, he'd phone me up and go, you know that job you're working? I've just filled it. Bastard. So that was his way of recruiting me into the business <laughs> to say, look, we've got all the jobs and all the candidates going to work for us. <laughs> That's class. So I then went to work for Reed, uh, did five years there, yeah. um, and then set up IDEX with Matt yeah. Green, um, many okay. moons ago and here I am wicked mate so let, let's uh, we're definitely going to uncover that story mate uh, <laughs> that journey so why that, Why did you want to get into recruitment like um, how did that come about well I think I've always worked in I've always been in team environments I've always been around people my network's okay. always been quite wide Okay. and I've always been interested genuinely this isn't just a spiel yeah. um, in how people got to where they got to Okay. you know I'm from a, a, a background that wasn't that affluent so I was yeah. trying to work out how can I be yeah, yeah. Uh, how can I what get to where you different? are yeah yeah you know what, what why mm. am I living here and yeah, why are you living yeah, there yeah, and what yeah. did you do to get there so I explored I, I explored reasons as to how they've got the career they were that they were at really and, and I like that aspect of it really so I got into recruitment yeah because my questioning skills had always been the case of trying to find out how people had got where they got to really which I could then carry out in the recruitment job anyway yeah, using my yeah, network yeah. to actually put people that's really together. interesting what else did you, through that curiosity then, did you start reading books and things like that or was it anything, or was it just that real curiosity that obviously helped you in recruitment massively from, from day one? Well, I don't think I read a book till I was about 30, so I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, oh, maybe not then. I don't think that was the case. I think at the time it was just, you You know, it was a time before Facebook and yeah, social media. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'm showing my age, I apologise for that. Yeah. Um, but it was different then, so a lot of people I saw in recruitment were generally successful yeah yeah, yeah and, you didn't and, have as much access to information absolutely so i wanted that success but i also knew that i had a, a skill of um of socializing i could walk mm. into a football changing room not know any players and I'd, i wouldn't be the best player there but i could still be able to network and, yeah, yeah, and okay. be able to find my way in that group and i yeah. knew that i could carry that into business i think there's a lot of similarities with sports yeah and business you know you walk into an office for the first time you know, it can mm. be intimidating. Yeah. Um, and it's the same when you walk into a football changing room yeah. and you've got the guy that's a brilliant footballer, you've got your big tackler, you've got all these different... Yeah, 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 yeah. And you adapt. Yeah. And I think that's why I knew I'd be good at recruitment because I had the ability to do that. I like that. I like that. So, um, okay. So let, let's break down sort of a bit of your recruitment career. So obviously, you've been at obviously IDEX now that you um, originally founded with a number of directors. It's like that's over 10 years now, isn't it? We were yeah. just talking about that. So let's talk a bit before then. So you worked for a small boutique agency. That was your first job, right? Cast, casting it back a bit here. Well, my, fir my first job was in financial services. Oh, okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah, so I got a job and got qualified in the industry that I now recruit. Okay, um, that's But I had the option then either to be a power planner, mm -hmm. which is financial services, um, or go into recruitment. So I took the option of going into recruitment at that point. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a real, you know, really big decision at the time. You, you, you yeah, remember yeah, certain yeah. decisions in your life that kind of take you in different directions. Yeah. And at that point... I remember, you know, talking to lots of different people about what I should do um, and everyone had a different opinion. So I just went, followed the gut Did you? Um, and went into recruitment at that point. So and I'm, obviously, I'm, yeah, I'm, okay, that's back, interesting. So. And then it was a small BT cadence that you joined initially. Yeah, very, very small. There was, what, uh, 20, 20 employees at the time. I was mm. the first one to do financial services in that really? market. Like a um, cold desk. Yeah, completely cold desk. Um, you know, at that point, we were still faxing 
uh, Jesus Christ. I know, I know, mate. Mental. You know, it's not good. That's mental, um, mate. You know, still fax your CVs and that sort of stuff. So it was, it was, it was tough. Mm. But I, straight away, I loved it. Really? Loved what it. do you love about it? Um, well, I remember of specifically, I worked in financial services, and, yeah. and there was a guy there who was was a director of a business. He was my boss by you know, yeah, yeah. he was ten rungs up the ladder. And as my first day, I had him as a candidate. So suddenly this really? guy that's been uh, directing me and telling me I should be working <laughs> harder and doing all this sort of stuff, yeah, yeah. I'm suddenly then directing his class. career. Class. Um, and, and he listened and respected me. Mm. You know, for suddenly when you, you, know, you were in the lower levels uh, within financial services, suddenly I felt that I had this ability to kind of guide people and, mm. um, and, and talk to people on, on their level. Mm. Um, and, and I love that aspect of it really. And I yeah. knew... Um, that every time I spoke to a candidate or a client, this still stands now, I genuinely wanted to help them. Mm. You know, and I know that sounds really corny. It wasn't about no, just getting a fee. I was, I was trying to work out, right, how can I make your career better? Mm. And like, and even now when I see people that I've done that, it was all about the career move, not the yeah, job move. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love that aspect of it. And I still get a buzz now, even talking about it now. Yeah, I'm getting all excited. Yeah, yeah, in the, yeah. You know, and I it's think there's, in recruitment, it's, you know, the, the good people, and there are a lot of good people if you've seen on this pod or listened to on this podcast, which has been amazing mm. to, to hear some of the quality that's out there. Yeah. But the good people are the ones that actually try and guide people's careers totally. rather than just looking to find them a job at that instance. And, yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. what I loved. And I did that straight away. And, and that's what that's I That's amazing. From. Okay. So, so, and that was, so you was there, what, five months or so, did you say? Yeah. And then yeah. you were, and then you went to read for like five years. Yeah, I was I was there for five months and as I say, my, my friend a uh, guy called um Chris Astle yeah. um was working he'd been doing that that sort of market, market for a for period a of time. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. was trying to get me to move across there and I yeah. was saying, No, no, I wanna be loyal. Yeah. I hadn't moved jobs you know much. Yeah, it was yeah, quite course, a big thing. Um and literally he was teasing me every time, going, Yeah, we've just got like ten jobs in and I was phoning around a hundred people they'd never heard of us to try and get one average <laughs> job in. And they were just getting all these jobs called in. And every time he got a job in, he'd phone me and tell me and say, Look, I've just got this brilliant job, you'd love to work this one, you know that. Horrible. So so yeah, he's he's horrible and funny at the same time. <laughs> um so obviously then I, I then went across okay. and, and, and worked for Reed yeah, and, and And he was there for like five years, did you say, yeah? Yeah, five years. So I managed the uh, I grew the team and then we set up a mortgage division. Okay. Uh, I oversaw insurance. Had uh, about twenty five people in the end. Okay, uh, doing about two point four cool. million. Let's let's unpack that then, mate. I think there, there'll be loads of stuff in there. So, um, I've, <clears throat> so first observation then, because this helped me in my um, recruitment career. Obviously, I worked in insurance and recruited in insurance. That massively helps, which it seems like it helps you from yeah. day one. Yeah. So now, so for people that don't have that experience in the industry. I'm sure, so have you recruited people now that haven't worked in financial services that are now in your team, right? I'm assuming. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what's from your, because you've worked in the industry, how do you then encourage them to get immersed in the financial service in the actual industry that they're recruiting? Is there anything that you tell them to do straight off the bat to get involved? Well, I, I, in terms of understanding the industry, I think you need to understand the people in the industry more than anything and yeah. who reports into who and the structural element of it. I don't think it's all about understanding the intricacies of what a pension is or okay. an investment is. It's yeah. more about understanding how the structures of the businesses work and, and what their mm. their cultures are. It's changed a lot through the years, hasn't it, in terms mm. of what you need to know and what yeah, you need yeah, to do yeah. in recruitment. But um, the people that I recruit now aren't, you know, some of our most successful have never worked in the industry. Yeah. But I know you speak a lot about yeah, mentality, yeah. but... You know, what I try and look for in recruiters now is more about how they bounce back. Mm. You know, I think we recruited one individual um, who had um, got a master's, been traveling, you know, the amazing sort of life, everything yeah. perfect. And then when she got some, you know, a drop off or a job, even a job drop off, it broke her, broke her heart and she couldn't deal with it because yeah, she never yeah. dealt with adversity. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I think mindset, but I look for people now, it's not about industry knowledge. It's about how do you deal with adversity and how do you bounce back from adversity? Yeah, because yeah. as you know, you get a yeah. lot of knockbacks in recruitment. Oh, yeah, big time. And if you can't deal with them, yeah. you're not going to go anywhere. So mm. so you, I don't think you necessarily, I'm sure, I don't think you need to have worked in the industry necessarily. Yeah, yeah. It's more about character and personality for me to, That's fair to, that makes people successful. And then, now. yeah, it's just about picking up the nuances within your industry by yeah. speaking to people. Yeah, but bit. I mean, we're, we're fortunate at the moment. We've got a lot of people with lots of knowledge. I think we've got mm. 50% of our business have been with us longer than five years. Yeah, so straight away people can um, tap into that. Yeah. And then a lot of people listening will probably have that knowledge around them. Yeah. So it's like... Tap into that, yeah, mm. straight away. And also, I think there's a team-based approach to helping people. You know, we've got yeah. we have candidates and clients work come to us, 
and it's the whole team that helps them. You've got an individual mm. that looks after the desk, but the knowledge is not just from that individual, it's from the whole team yeah, yeah, yeah. and the years of experience that, that they've got, really. So okay. there's, there's lots of... Uh, the bigger you are, the more experience you have to draw yeah, upon. Yeah, yeah. I think when you first start and you first recruit, you might need that financial services experience, mm. but as you go through time, yeah, it, for it's sure. less important. So um, let's talk a bit about the, this time at Reed then. So like, obviously you... Yeah, like, so what was going on in like the f- sort of first 12 to 24 months? Like, so did you start... Did you, so this guy was telling you I got all this job, blah, blah, blah. And then you joined there, obviously. Yeah. So then was you working under him? Or was you no, working? no, we were, we were working alongside each other. All oh, right, okay. Uh, we, we were managerless for about a year and a half. Really? So and, it was just you two building? Uh, me me and, and one of the guy, yeah. yeah. But we did very little, really, for, for a year and a half. Really? And, and that kind of made me realise that the importance of having management. Really? Um, what do you know, mean by I didn't do very little? Like, was well, a, bit, we, a bit lazy. Well, yeah, I, I don't think we, we... We're in a small office. Mm. Even though we're a Reed, we're just one team, you know. Yeah, they've got office. loads of different teams, So we, 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 you know, we didn't see anyone being successful. Yeah. So we didn't know what success was. And, and yeah. part of everything in life is understanding and seeing success. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what makes you want to grab it more. So we yeah. didn't have access to seeing anybody doing well. The person doing well at that point was doing 50, 60 grand. So we were just, you know, you just tried to be better than the worst person, yeah. which, <laughs> yeah. which, which, does, which doesn't, uh, crea- help, doesn't create a successful environment really. Yeah, yeah. And then that's when uh, Matt Green, who's now my business partner, came yeah. in, managed us uh, uh-huh. and took us took to, to, to a different level and, and then carried us through. Okay, so. cool. So what, so... What? How were those sort of first two, first year and a half? Then, when you didn't have a manager, like, was what was you doing? Like, was it so? Was you straight in there building a desk, BD, and yeah. everything? Like, yeah, b- building a desk. But I, I was, I was, you know, I was running blind for the first three really? years. Yeah, I had no, no one telling me what to do, no guidance in terms of. So I just did what I thought I could, I should do, which is just phone people and really, um, and and, and that worked. You know, yeah. I, I had quite a bit of success and mm. and started to build a really strong network in financial services. Mm. Um, and I worked there until uh, the recession, mm. um, and that was anyone that worked through that was was the most challenging time ever. And we that was just um, I'd set up IDEX with Matt or gone to join Matt. Mm. Sorry, um, and then the recession hit. Really, when you so I walked it? away from I was a director level at, at Reed. Everything was going well. I was kind of the Reed golden boy at one point. You know, really? we had the fastest growing division, most profitable. I walked away from that job to set up IDEX. Everything was glorious. And then the recession hit and they were dark days. And I literally fun. remember calling around and saying, you know, talking about recruitment and people were laughing down the phone saying, haven't you seen the news? Um, so yeah. that, that was a seriously, you know, imagine going from big director role, yeah. setting up, I was in a, a really shabby office with leaks and in the yeah. middle of nowhere. Um, so I'd gone from, you know, a really Man United striker, I guess, to... Yeah. Uh, Grimsby reserves very quickly. Wow. Uh, okay. But let, it was the best thing that happened because yeah. it was character. Let, we'll, look, we'll go into that, but I just want to just talk a bit about before that because there there'll be loads of learnings in that. So like, so as you said, so a year and a half, but those three years you were blind leading the blind, right? Yeah. There was and no then, targets, no KPIs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. then and then, but by the time you left, you were just saying obviously you grew this team to to what was it you said? I think you mentioned the figure. What did you? Yeah, we, to? we we had in the end we had twenty four people, two point four million. Yeah. Um, so you know, for re, that, yeah, you know, that's a hundred hundred grand. So let's a talk a bit about how you got to that point. Yeah. yeah. Like so, let's so what so firstly, so a big part of it was that you didn't have a manager, so you had no guidance as to yeah. right. So this is how you're going to grow this desk to to that. So that was that a big factor, obviously, that you didn't have a manager. Absolutely. Yeah. So so first, I guess. So what did you learn over those sort of first three years? That's worth talking about over those first three years where you felt yeah you were just doing what you thought was best. Yeah, I think I think the first three years taught me that you need structure. Mm. You know, you need um, you need a leader that inspires. Mm. You know, and I think when, uh, you know when Matt did join, we had a leader that inspired us and showed us a way. And I mentioned earlier about mm. seeing success. Mm. You know, he wanted you know someone that was saying, right, this is what you can have if you do this. If you build yeah, this yeah, much, yeah. this is what you can have. And suddenly made it real. So the first few years, I think, it made me realise that you need to to visualize mm. what you're trying to achieve you know talking mm. about doing five interviews or six interviews a week really doesn't mean anything unless yeah. you break it down to actually what that what means that actually to you means, and what, yeah. what, what, what the outcome yeah, what the yeah, outcome yeah. of that okay. of achieving those targets is and that's what i learned really is you need to work out where you're going mm. and break down what mm. you need to do on a daily basis to achieve that goal yeah okay i like that and for you i mean it seems like innately it was about yeah generally helping people like 
what is that all it's always about money isn't it really like in, in the recruitment world it's like yeah, yeah you're yeah, driven by money so like was that always attached was it always attached to money with you at that stage or yeah. was it what that you could actually build and what you could create and the difference you could make a- absolutely i think you know when, when you get your first bonus the, the money makes a, a huge difference but it it comes down to more than that in recruitment yeah. when you've earned your first big bonus then you know they all it's different isn't it yeah, so yeah. so i certainly think the element of of helping people and, and being being someone yeah you know that that was a big thing for me is is being someone and being someone that i walk down the street and people say how you doing and i can Mm. i've placed them two years ago or you know a chief exec or a director of business walking down the road and saying hello yeah you know that was kind of that was a real motivation for me and also i think people um respecting the the work that i did and the way that i worked as well and the way that i operated that was a big driver for me so that's yeah that's interesting so obviously you got the monetary there but and then it's everything else that comes with that that, that yeah. really drove you and, and that was the sort of North Star that you needed to yeah. see what what is this what is these daily things that I'm doing and it's helping me get to that point absolutely yeah. money's, money's not everything is it really mm. but then when I got given a manager's role at Reed mm. and then it was a different part then I wanted to help other people in yeah, the business yeah, yeah, and I wanted yeah. to make them better yeah. and I wanted us all to go on this journey you know I was always captain of football teams yeah, and yeah. it was about right this is what we're doing lads the world's against us yeah, yeah. or lads and lasses yeah. let's do it this all is right. what our target is for the year this is okay. what our target is for the week and when we get there we celebrate together and we enjoy it yeah yeah all right Let, let's t- so so those three years matt came in made such a difference and in the next two years it seemed like then so you got that manager's yeah. status and then you really grew this team and it was really successful so so firstly did you know that you wanted to be a manager because obviously a lot of people get forced down that route like so up until that point like was you a good biller yeah, I was, I was always the, the, the top biller and I do believe that not every top biller makes a good manager but I think I was always the outspoken one. Yeah. Um, so I could, I think... He's willing people, to have the difficult pe- conversations. Yeah, pe- people would listen to me, I think, if I, mm. if I agreed with something or I didn't agree with something, then yeah, they'd yeah. listen to me. Um, so I guess I was the, the, the naughty boy that was made school <laughs> prefect and, and yeah, actually yeah. worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then I realised... So did they that, say, we're making you a... A manager. I yeah, think. yeah. So, so manage this team. So I was complaining about a lot of things and the way we operated. And they said, well, you manage it then. Here and you then go. And then made the difference. Yeah, and I made the difference. Really? And, and grew it. And, I, and then I realised that I think, you know, there's different ways of managing people. But I realised I did have a bit of a, a knack for it. I don't know how it wasn't. Mm. And then you read the books. And then you go to different yeah. training courses, courses. and all that. And then you adapt it. And, and, you know, ultimately you try and do right by, yeah, yeah. by your so people. So what... Um, so yeah, okay. So for you then, for your experience, as you said, like there's there'll be a lot of billers out there that aren't made to be managers or forced down over those things. Like what any advice for people to adapt to that new manager role that they now find themselves in or anything that that's yeah. worth talking about? I think yeah, I think recruitment generally. I think don't get um, too carried away with your own sense of importance. Really, I really believe that. I think I've seen yeah, I like I've, that. I've seen recruiters that can you know double treble quadruple their earnings in a short space of time and their personality changes of who they are um, mm. because money does change you doesn't it and I yeah. think and I think it's the same when you go from being a consultant to manager you know you, you still it doesn't make you better, better than yeah. anybody else and the worst managers I've seen in recruitment are yeah. those that get promoted and suddenly think they're better than everyone else and yeah. you listen to me because I'm your boss and I'm better than you yeah that's not the case when you did you uh, think that when you got promoted um I, I honestly don't think I did. did not no, no, I honestly don't think I did. But you've seen I, I think, that. You've seen but that I definitely now. think there's a point where where you start billing and you, you feel yourself changing and you think, yeah. oh, you know, and then you, you, if you've got good people around you, they ground you. Yeah. Um, and certainly, I think it's it's really important. Certainly, we try and do it with, with guys at our place that mm. are, that are billing big. You know, still be you. Don't you're not better than anybody else yeah, yeah, based yeah. on really like that. how much you earn or how much you bill. Yeah. And I think you know, going back to the question of advice to people going into management, yeah. still be you and still do the right things and don't think you're better than anyone else because yeah, you're doing yeah. a you're you're the person that has to make decisions. Yeah. No, that's really good advice. So then, <clears throat> how did how did you go about <coughs> ramping up? That team then, like in those two years, right? So you, then obviously, as you said, became one of the key parts of um, a really profitable team in, in yeah. Reed. And any learnings through that in terms of, because um, I, I get a lot of questions around, oh, Hisham, can you ask people about what key, th- and I know you touched on it, but we can talk about it now, the sort of key things to look at as to what makes a good recruiter and these things, because that yeah. you must have got your hiring right to get the team up to, to that point, right? Obviously there's yeah, yeah. loads of other things once they're in the training and all that, yeah. but, yeah, how did you then end up getting the right people in into the team? 
Well, the, the recruitment aspect was based around, it really was based on personality. You yeah, know, yeah. I looked at a CV, but I, I really do believe that you hire people based on who they are as individuals. Yeah. And, and that sounds really obvious, but I think people can get carried away with mm. schools, there's colleges. There's got to be a bit of structure there. Though. There's, there's got to be, there's some key things you've got to look out that you know well, that you want. Though. Yeah, well, I want, I want someone that, has had some, and it sounds a terrible thing to happen, but all the all the successful people, yeah. recruiters that I know, have had something really bad happen to them in their life. Mm. So you look like, uh, like for the bad for, for the bad things that happen to people. In a way, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I think yeah, I ultimately, it. ultimately, I look, I look at the top top billers in my uh, in our business, yeah, and they've all had you know difficult times in life, yeah, yeah. and they deal with it and they overcome it and they be, become better for it. So you know, mm. we we all have challenges to face, and I think. It's the people that can demonstrate to me um, that they've had some really challenging to overcome and they've come through it as a better individual. They're the guys mm. um, that are successful in recruitment and, and, and that's a really basic... We have so many knockbacks and setbacks in yeah, recruitment. Yeah. If you can't deal with those and you don't learn to enjoy them, which I know that sounds mm. re- even more weird, but yeah, yeah. I actually enjoy failure now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I try and instill in other guys to enjoy failure because if you enjoy failure because you know you've learned from it, yeah, yeah, totally. then the job's great. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's not about all the successes. It's right. Try something new, fail, and then if you can overcome that and you learn from yeah, it, yeah. you're better for it. And I think we're in an environment and a world where people are scared to make mistakes. Yeah, they're for scared sure. to say the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, so going back to the question in terms of recruitment, I'm looking for people that have tried something, failed, mm. but got back up got and learned from it and become better from it. So how how do you how do you test that in an interview scenario? Because there'll be a lot of managers listening. Like, yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. How do you find that? How do you find that in someone? Like, well, sim- simply ask ask the question. Ask yeah. them to talk, you know whether it's in work or outside of work. What's mm. the biggest challenge you've overcome? And talk you through that process. Mm. How did it make you feel? What yeah. did you do? Going how did detail. you react? Make them live that failure right Mate, in front I, I want to see them crying. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. I want to see them yeah, crying yeah, and coming yeah. out gloriously at the end of it. But, yeah, but yeah. honestly, you know, you, it'd be interesting for anyone listening really is to to think about the top three billers in your business. Mm. And I, I would imagine. Um, you know, I haven't done any family fortune surveys, but yeah. I would imagine that if you look at their life and what they've been through, I bet they've had some big hits, mm. big hits that have knocked them down and they've got back up. And mm. I think if we can all, as recruit in the recruitment industry, what's just, been your big hit? Oh, you can't ask me that. Yeah, I can ask you that, mate. I can ask you that. What's been your big hit, mate? This question. This question. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, go on. Well, I've, uh, you know, from a from a personal perspective, um, you know, uh, I had a. a, a it's not a sub story, but you know, difficult ish background. Okay. Um, Talk to me, mate. Share it. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate. You got the violins out. <laughs> but no, you know, I'm from a, 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 a council estate in yeah. Birmingham, which was pretty rough. I remember first going to, uh, I, I had a really bad shirt and tie on going to my first job because I wanted to get out of the council estate. Really? And I had to fight people to get to the bus to try and get to my job. Fucking um, hell. So, so, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, that's not. So I'm sure everybody's had those kind of things. So I've yeah. had, I've had knockbacks. You know, not getting the first recruitment job was yeah, probably yeah, the yeah. first knockback where I, I thought, I'm right, prove them wrong. I'm now. gonna, I'm gonna come back and show you. Know, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll get myself a blazer when I've got enough money to get myself a blazer. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I did that, and and I can't remember the guy's name that interviewed me. But if he's listening today, thank you for, for, <laughs> for rejecting me. That's class. That's and class. And I'd love to meet you one day and and stick my two fingers yeah. up at you. Know, <laughs> that, so. Class, mate. And <laughs> um, what I was gonna say, so. Cool. I, re- I really like that. That's some really good insight. And um, is there, uh, what, what else went on in those last two years then? As you said, you got well, to the, So how, how were your... Did you always bill until you left? Yeah, yeah. So mm. I've, I've always I've always billed. I had one year where I didn't bill and I felt... Was that a read or IDEX? No, it was an IDEX. Okay. Um, and I felt horrible, really. Really? I think, you know, your billings ident- gives you that kind of little bit of level of respect. And yeah. the managers have always seen in recruitment that don't bill, or at least not bill, but certainly bring in some income or some opportunities yeah. or some leads. Mm. Yeah, you know, you got what you're doing. You know, yeah, you're yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the last two years, what I think what, I've, what I did well and what we've done well at, at, at IDEX, really, in terms of managing is create an environment for people to succeed. Mm. That, that, is, that is big, you know, we, we surveyed people on our database recently and the biggest driver for people joining the business now was culture. You know, it wasn't really? salary, it wasn't anything like that, so it's culture. So pe- what people want now and what people look for when they join the business, people want a, a, a good culture, someone where the manager wants them to be successful, mm. will help them to be successful and show them what they need to do. Yeah, Not like just that. say, right, you've got to do this KPI, that KPI. 
mm. use KPIs as a barometer of how they're doing based on where they want to get to. Mm. And I think that's the big, the biggest difference. How, how did you cultivate that in recruitment, which is a very, like I've been there, like the business that I was in, I've, it was fucking competitive. Like I knew, is, yeah. like, and, do you know what I mean? So like how, how have you gone about cultivating, yeah, the right culture and the right team culture where they know that you're going to help them and you've got their best interests at heart, but you've also got my colleague who I'm competing with technically best interests as well. Do you know what I mean? So how did you, how have you sort of helped that or helped cultivate that? Well, I, th- I think, you know, we're quite quick to criticise in life, aren't we? I yeah, think. yeah, totally. And, and one of the, one of the going back to when I did read a book when I was thirty <laughs> um, was about little things as a manager. You know, saying hello, it's really basic things. Yeah. Saying hello to people, saying well done for a good call. Oh yeah, little, I little, need I need well done. Tiny little things. We all need yeah. a little bit of a pat on the back, don't we? And oh yeah, totally. And, and especially with, in sales and, and fucking yeah, recruitment. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of times where people say that's not a good call, that's not a good yeah. email, that's not this. Trying to look for pe- for for things that people do well. Mm. And, and, you know, if I get someone say well done to me for anything, even as a grown man, yeah. 15 years experience, I still have it. that silly little smile on my face yeah, that I'm yeah. trying to hide, but I'm really yeah. happy. Yeah. Um, so I think just cultivating a, 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 an environment where everyone is happy for everyone else's success. Yeah. That's um, big. And I think that comes from the top. Yeah. Um, you know, if you, you, you know, you, you say well done here and there and you, you raise people's profile internally, but also making sure that everyone is trying to do something different, push themselves mm. and not worried about making mistakes yeah. and not criticizing when people make a mistake if they've tried to do something. Yeah. If you make the mistake when you've done it, you know, you've been told twice, yeah. then that's a bit different, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, yeah. certainly encouraging people to be better and encouraging people to be good human mm. beings. And I think it's also you as a manager understanding what people's, what you're talking about, the vision and where they're going, mm. that you can't paint everyone's vision the same with the same brush, can you? So understanding where where people are motivated to get to and what drives them and those things as well, isn't it? Yeah, that, you that's need, big. You need, to get, you need to know your people, don't you? So I think yeah, yeah. each person in the business, I can tell you exactly what their motivator is and yeah, what yeah. their driver so is. But, but then at the start of the year, what we do is break down, right, why are you here? Mm. Why are you doing what you do? Why are you going to get all these knockbacks? Mm. And working out whether they want a car, a house, mm. and then working out how much they need to get that. Mm. And then breaking down their weekly KPIs based on what they want to achieve in life. So if you only want to earn that much, that's fine. Then that's what you do on a daily basis. But if you want to earn that, this is what you do on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah. So that it's real for people. Everything everyone does every day is real. Yeah, and it I means like something to them. So if you've got your picture, oh, you know, we used to have pictures of cars or really? whatever we wanted. Um, that vision board. A vision, just, just yeah, a vision. Yeah. Because, no, I like that. you know what, if you don't know where you're going, you don't know when you get there. Yeah. And I think that's really important for, for people yeah, to yeah. say, right, at the start of the year, what do you want? and mm. why are you doing this job? Mm. And this is what you need to do on a daily basis. So yeah, yeah. using KPIs as a barometer against that, yeah. as opposed to something to bash them over the head with if they don't do it. Yeah. You know, you could say to people, you know, if you, I thought you said you wanted a car at the start of the year. If you're not yeah, doing this, you're not going to get your yeah, car yeah. and relating it to that. Really. Yeah, I really giving, like that. Giving, giving consultants the, the, the freedom. That's good, mate. Um, so before we go into uh, the dark days, beginning days of IDEX then. So you mentioned obviously the, 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 the golden boy at one point. So what, what what was your best year billings wise? Was it a read or has it been at IDEX? Uh, it's been at IDEX actually. So I'm not a, a huge biller because okay. obviously I've got excuses because I'm managing the business as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm certainly not at the, at the million pound. What's I've been your best year? Two uh, fifty. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But consistently doing doing that year on year. So that's my excuse. Yeah. Um, but we've got guys in the business now that are, that are much better consultants than me. Really. Um, and that's good. Yeah, and that's good. Course. Surely, I think that's you know, I think if you if you're growing a business and you want to be the top biller, then you, your business isn't going to thrive. Yeah, 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 and that's my disclaimer for not doing more than two. Fair enough, mate. Yeah. Fair so, enough. Um, <laughs> but we, I mean, we've got a, we've got a guy in our, our business now that's doing you know six seven hundred plus. Fucking and, he, and he's you know he's a phenomenon in in terms of how he operates and, and really? what he does, and he's a technician, and it's beautiful to watch him in 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 action. Really? You know, he's superb. Uh, I recruited him ten years ago, and he's he's much better than me as a consultant. Now. Yeah, and that's fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I think you know if that's that's what it should be about. I think if you are going into management, going back to your earlier question, yeah, you you should be looking for people to become better than you. Yeah. 
and don't worry about them becoming so better you. So you get in the way, don't you? Yeah, you otherwise you get in the way of their progression. Yeah. Um, and so I think you should always be looking for That takes for, some for real individuals. humility though, doesn't it? And like, well, it, it, to it look does. in the mirror. And job security as well. Yeah. You know, it does take a lot of humility to do it. But sh I was always told you should be looking to recruit people better than you when you recruit. Yeah, yeah, I if, like you, that. if you do that, whether you're in recruitment or in financial services or whatever, yeah, yes. if you look to recruit people better than you, then your business is going to thrive as a result of it. Mm. Okay. So why did you join Windex then when things were all going good? Um... I think it was. Obviously, the, Matt clearly had an impact on. Yeah, you Matt, had, Matt had a massive impact, and yeah. he's, you know, he's, he had a big, big draw on it. Really, I had an yeah. opportunity to, to go with Matt when it first set up, and at the time, I was just having a, my first kid, and yeah, I couldn't too afford, much risk. Yeah, really. I couldn't afford not to earn for that period of time. So I joined. Uh, I think it was about twelve months later, um, and I did that because I, I felt that working for a big national, you couldn't. You were driven by. Um, KPIs and targets that weren't in the best interests of the client and candidate. Interesting. Um, and and you know I think there was some some poor practice going on. I'm not saying this. I'm not knocking Reed because it was a good grinding, but mm. certainly I think we we could create a business that was built on what our clients and candidates wanted, yeah. as opposed to what we wanted from a profit level or anything like that. So we yeah. actually looked at the clients, looked at the candidates and built the business back from what they wanted as opposed to the other yeah. way around. Yeah, class. Um, and I, I love I love that opportunity and it was- Yeah, you well know, you said it from day one, that's the part that you loved, right? So yeah. it, I totally get that. I mean, but at the same time, if you work for a big corporate, the only way that they're gonna be able to manage the success and all the, is having those fucking KPIs and everything else, isn't it? Yeah, that's they, the they have to way. have one, and yeah. I understand it and I get it. You yeah. have to have the KPIs. That makes sense. But even now we've got what, 40, 45 people in our business, but mm. each individual in our business has completely different KPIs. Yeah. Because the, each person has a different desk, they have a different ratios. Different you know, goals, different, different motivations. Different goals, different motivations. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we, even at our size now, where most firms will get to our size and have the same KPIs across the board, we haven't done that. And, and each person like has their own individual uh, desk KPIs that they work towards based on what their desk did last year yeah, yeah, and yeah. type of relationship. Okay, mate. So let, let's talk about those dark days then. Let's talk about that. So like, so yeah, so yeah, so join them. You decided just to wet hold off a set. Obviously, had your, your um, children, etc. Yeah. Join them financial crisis. So li like, let's talk a bit about that because it's hard for me to really comprehend that. How old are you? Uh, Twenty six. Right, right. So I've never had to. You look older than that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> like I haven't, I haven't experienced that. Right, and I think yeah. there'll be a few people. Now Brexit and all these things. Like I'm no, I'm no politician. I don't follow the news if I'm well, honest, yeah, so. yeah. But like, like let's talk a bit about that. Like, yeah. what actually was that like? I, I think it's hard to put into uh, unless you actually experienced it. It's hard. I remember at one point thinking, what career am I going to do now? Because recruitment will never be Fuck, a job mad. again. It was that bad. You know, that's you, crazy. You, you're picking up. At the time, we were picking up, you know, one, two jobs a month. It was that bad. Really? But what we were fortunate of is because we looked after our clients, they kind of felt sorry for us <laughs> when we set up the business. So if they did have any work or any jobs that come give on, it they give it to us. So we actually benefited over the big nationals because mm. they kind of, they felt for us. They knew us. They'd experienced me move. They knew I'd had a kid. Yeah. Then, you know, so at least I had the relation. And that's why it kind of taught me to look after your clients always because yeah, always. they're the ones that, that, look after you and, and need you so if it does happen again i've got enough client relationships enough people that i've looked after and serviced yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully you know they'll, they'll give us some business but i don't i think it's hard to, to actually put into words but i'm talking about you know it was it was difficult to get any interviews you know candidates were, were so getting what, what the, the hardest thing was candidates that you knew and clients that you knew and had worked with for years were being made redundant and their whole lives were, were you know on the line, I guess, really, because yeah. they've lost the jobs. And you, you've got people genuinely crying on the phone saying they'd lost the job and not being able to get anything else sorted. So you became from a recruiter to a, a Samaritan, really. So, <laughs> and it, it genuinely felt that way. And it was, but you're also, at the same time, thinking, I don't know if I'm going to have a job. <laughs> you know, I've just done this move and that sort of stuff. So yeah. I think... How long did that go on for? Um, it was probably about 18 months. Fucking yeah, hell. a long time. So, I mean, you, you've... But, how did you... So how the fuck did you get through that? Uh, I, I, with great difficulty with the support I was um, some really with good the people. support of my my, uh, my now wife and yeah. um, and we'll family Matt and Matt, Matt Matt was great you know we had to we had to work around the finances and, and work a lot of things out um, but again 
that's what I'm talking about. You talk, asked me earlier about my knockbacks. Mm. That was a knockback. And it Good made time. me, I learned more in that year and a half than I've learned in the 10 years subsequently. Yeah. Um, because you learn what's important. You learn not to get too carried away with yourself. Mm. You learn to ride the successes and understand that the fail. you know, I've gone, yeah, through, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was, it was really bad where you've, it can turn at any point, can't it? I yeah, think we're yeah. in a position now, hopefully that it wouldn't happen like that again, but it, it teaches you a lot. And that's mm. where I get, thing where I would look for people that dealt with adversity because yeah, I, yeah, I know yeah. I learnt more from that year and a half yeah. when times were really tough than I've done from the 10 yeah. years of success after that as well yeah that's class and so one of the biggest learnings through that then was like you really realise that clients are the people that you need to make sure that you really double down on that relationship absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. look always you know always do the right thing by everyone by, yeah. by your clients and yeah, by, yeah, by your yeah, candidates yeah. I guess that's the thing isn't it and if they've done that then they'll do right by you in future yeah. but also as I was saying earlier don't get too carried away with success mm. you know you can build two three a million pounds but one economic factor or one change can suddenly change that so don't get too carried away because at the end of the day we're recruiters aren't we and I think <laughs> people get too carried away with their own sense of importance yeah, yeah. and I think you know I've been through times when I've seen someone go from a 300 pound biller to a nothing Billa, because yeah. of one change in the economy so things can change quickly so just stay grounded yeah i like that Let, let's talk a bit more about that i, I really like how you've mentioned that quite a few times now because if i think back look i don't like there's that's why i was like talking about mindset and those things because like how many how many really successful billers are getting pulled aside and getting spoken about about finances about about their um and mental health well-being and how to yeah keep grounded and have that humility do you know what i mean and it seems like you really approach it that way so like what is it how has it has it, has it has it always been like that have you always been open to those conversations to you said like your big village you have those conversations like to make them aware like look don't get ahead of yourself do, the, do you know what i mean well, like I think, yeah i think the big billers in our business are a little bit more worldly wise than than that but i think it's more when you first come in in the first three years if you've got people coming uh, you know going from 25 grand earnings to 50 grand earnings you're talking about people doubling their, their. yeah so i certainly think when I mean, we had a, a company come in and talk to us about financial education mm. um to try and give people some pointers of what to do with their money because yeah. it's quite easy to you know i've done it myself when you first start billing yeah you get some money on the board and you've spent the money before you've even yeah, got yeah, the money yeah. paid in well look you see so, that, so, but you see that's how they advertise recruitment now to young people to get in it's the rolexes it's the less IB so for now, holidays. Surely, less so now nah, surely. it's not mate Is it's it? not honestly it's not well uh, but, but i'm not then, saying that but works then, but, then but, there's a, but then there's lots of different types of firms isn't it yeah yeah, yeah so but i'm I th- saying I think the majority of firms if you went online and you looked at what they promoted in terms of work on their work for us page because yeah, i yeah. fucking look at these companies yeah, all day yeah, yeah. a lot the go-to is ib for trips incentives yeah. commission rolex yeah. all that yeah so it's do you know what i mean yeah well I, I do i do know what you mean but we we promote certain aspects of of, of success but success doesn't always mean money, does it? So I no, think of course if, people, it doesn't. if people are promoting money as the driving factor of people joining, then they're going to get a certain type of individual, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess you know, if we talk to any business about how they recruit, you you advertise based on the type of individual you want to attract. Yeah, of course. If you advertise purely based on money, then you're going to get a type of individual of that only is only interested in money and will sell his own yeah, brand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess you know, if that's what businesses have. But business how? So how? How? So how have you cult? How have you just? start to communicate to, that, to these people because all of a sudden you're going from being their manager to being a bit of a life thing and I know do you know what I mean so it's like have, how, has it just naturally happened where you've sat these people down and gone look this is what I learned through getting more money I can see that you're doing really well now like do you know what I well, mean it's not my job to guide them is it because no. you know um, so we, we got a firm in to come and talk about financial okay, education okay so you actually made the, yeah, yeah, yeah so okay, it's one, cool, of, one cool, of our cool. clients that specifically focuses on going into corporate businesses and talking about financial well-being Cool, I like so, that. So we've done that and we've like also that. had um, a mindset coach come in. So a lot of the training like that, that we do yeah. is not, well, it is, it's not on sales training because really, why would you train someone on sales if their mindset's poor? Yeah, totally. There's no point. So you're better off training on the mindset, getting people positive, getting people to understand each other. And we've had some great sessions where you, you, you're sitting around and you've got all the team talking about things that you just didn't realize about them and yeah. the, the bonding of the team as That's a result really of that is great so mindset i think is important um but also yeah a bit of and, and that's where the team 
sort of see that you're trying to do right by them. Mm. You know, we don't have to pay for someone to come in and educate them on finances. Yeah, no, I like that. That's something we're doing because we're trying so to important. make them better I people. I think more people just need to be having those conversations because, like, there's fucking mid-20s. Like, obviously, it wasn't me. I built 24K in my first year, which I'm hoping about. <laughs> I wasn't buying fucking Rolexes and shit. That's what I did in the recession. That yeah. recession, that was, oh, yeah, I was happy with that. Out. But, um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, like, but there, look, I know there's, mid, like, fucking 25-year-olds out there driving Aston Martins and shit like that. Yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's just like more people need yet. to have that fucking conversation. It's like, look, it, it, do you know what I mean? Like there's more to it than this Aston Martin and all that. Like what, you, do, like what is your plan? What is your financial well-being? all this? Yeah. So, that's not really, that's, that's life generally, that's the country generally, isn't it? There needs to be a yeah, financial yeah. education piece. So I totally. Think, but ultimately as a, as a recruitment, you know, manager, business owner, whatever you want to do, I guess it's just trying to, what, what do your people need mm. to make them successful in life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, you know, money, if you, waste it is not going to help that so I guess it's just mm. making sure that you're trying to give people the education that they need mm. um, to make sure that they get to a point when they leave IDEX yeah, that yeah, they're yeah. set up for life that's the yeah. idea if we can get people that are set up for life leaving IDEX mm. that's perfect well even if they're set up against IDEX well listen if they've done 10, 10 years for us or and done done a great job if they're set up against us as long as they're not taking our clients <laughs> for, for the 12 month restrictive covenant <laughs> then, then crack on pretty sweet um, yeah, but I yeah, think ultimately enough. I think you, you, you know, no, I like someone, if someone's done 10 years service and they, they leave as a good no, leaver that's class good luck to them mate. Good yeah, luck yeah to them. No, that's class mate so let, let's talk a bit about <clears throat> after the recession and then what's been going on since then so how how big is your team now uh, the the financial team, services financial fund. services, we've got 13 across the country, so we've broken that down. We've we've just niched, really, uh, which we probably should have done sooner. Really, um, what's been the benefits of that then? Um, under, you know, having an intricate knowledge of the specific markets mm. and the the people within those markets. More importantly, I think we really? were we were specialists that were generalists. Really, generally specialists, whatever. Yeah, you know. yeah, so yeah. We, we were specialists, but really, was well, that because what you would? Let's say you got a a financial services firm, what, would you recruit too many of the roles that you could recruit for? Do you know what I mean? Was there, did yeah. you double down on certain sectors within the business that you just focused on as opposed to, oh yeah, I'll do all of it? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we kind of, we just get whatever we, we could grab hold of, I guess, at one point. Yeah, so yeah. I think certainly the last three years, we've, um, you know, increased our average fee by about 30%. Um, really? Yeah, which, which has been a, a great exercise. How so, the fuck have we done that? Well, we started, started saying no to things. And started positioning ourselves differently, so we were kind of mid tier in terms of the the level. You we start doing at. more like retained and like yeah, we've done more more retained. So we're up about 50, 60 percent in terms of the, the retained work that we do. Um, but also we positioned ourselves differently in the market, and we're looking at different things. Really, we're trying to get more senior work, and that's worked mm. well. So we've got less clients now, mm. which was quite difficult to do. Is cutting clients? So no, that's difficult. Yeah. Isn't it? So so we're we've now got less clients than we've ever had, but we're doing more business than we've ever done. That's, that's really good. Um, it's really smart. And and also, you know, we're working less jobs than we've ever worked, but our jobs are so higher. much more focused. Yeah, you know that. Yeah, a absolutely. So you know, we grade grade our jobs, which has worked really well. So, really. So we're trying to work work things that we know we can. So when you say fill. grade your jobs, you're yeah, you work because you have to learn that quick in recruitment. You you'll just work fucking anything. So yeah. you, what you mean by that is your your consultants are working jobs that one they've got the relationship where their client is going to take their phone call if they need help yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But working jobs that they know is really important to their client and they know that they're going to get paid. Yeah, so, so I think what you know what we've done is we've put a process in place so that new joiners, you were talking about new joiners earlier and what yeah. you do for them, giving them an understanding of what a job that you can fill is. Yeah. So a fillable job, sorry. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have A jobs, B jobs and C and D jobs. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. so we're just purely focused on getting the jobs that we can fill Mm. Um, and that's based on the client relationship, where it is, money, all that sort of stuff. And, yeah, yeah. But they've they've got um, literally drop boxes of what they tick off to make sure that it's an A job, and they can only work roles at that you know that are A or B basically. I like that. Um, okay. So our, so yeah, our clients have halved, our average fees increased, um, and our job fills doubled. Um, Fucking hell! So out. yeah, so 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 we. How long is that, how long has that transition been? Do you think how about, long has that taken to get th to that th point? Three years. Really? Again, it's one of those that I wish we'd have just done it from the start. As mm. you know, mm. I'm sure everyone's like that. But if we'd have done that from the start, we'd probably be you know, mm. much further ahead than we are at the yeah, moment. Yeah. But but it, it's it, so how clients take how how why is it that clients are willing to pay you more then if you're doing the do you know what I mean? Well, they're not necessarily paying us more. We're just working on high level roles. Oh, sorry. Okay, okay, I get it. Okay. Yeah, so the, so the average fee in terms of the, the total amount as a 
the percentage. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're working on higher level roles now, and, and that's all we're focusing on really. So, but we're telling people that that's what we do. Yeah, that you makes know, sense. You, you get back, you, you fair, get back what you put out, don't you? So yeah, if you say yeah, to yeah. people you're a, you're a generalist, you'll get generalist roles. Yeah, totally. If you say to people this is my niche and this is what yeah. I do, then that's what you get back. So, 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 a bit of so simply, and because uh, to be fair, I've had a few I've had a few conversations actually on the phone and stuff where people like Leah, we're trying to in, yeah, we're trying to penetrate that high level, with the bigger salary bracket, and then that's literally, in short, simply, it's like tell everyone that's what you do that's absolutely. what you do that's how you can help yeah yeah, yeah absolutely okay. we as i say you get back what you put out don't you mm. so if you tell people this is what i do then that's what you get yeah, back, yeah you know so so we've had a lot of success with that but also going out and and pitching yeah i think recruitment a lot we probably went through a phase as a lot of people do where people hiding behind either the phone or mm. the phone's great but even worse hiding behind email mm. you know getting in front of people and actually pitching our services to people and what we can do to help their business and make them better yeah and i've loved that going out in front of chief execs directors and actually you know old-fashioned powerpoint and talking about right this is what we can do this is how we can help you yeah and this is where we'll, we'll go so and talking about the recruitment process as a whole as opposed to the products which is the candidate yeah, yeah i like so, that so that's that's good mate so a few things i want to dive into be keen to get your your perspective firstly so you mentioned that um, early on you built a desk from scratch and all these things. Had a couple of messages recently about some, if you could, if I could ask people about some advice to that. So if I'm a recruiter, I'm going into a, um, a recruitment agency and I've got this cold desk. It's, yeah. fuck knows, Java development desk. I don't know, I'm making it up, but yeah, yeah. it's a cold desk. Mm. What, what would be sort of your, your go-to advice for that person if they're, they're building a gold de- uh, cold desk from scratch? What would be some of your, from your experience? <laughs> Well, I'm, I mean, I was always told don't put green on green, so I think you need a decent recruiter to do that. But for the first thing is to research yeah. uh, the key players in the market. Okay, so, so map out your market. Map out your market. Who's the key companies that recruit in that area yeah. and who are the key contacts at those businesses yeah. and get in front of them and go and pitch to them. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the key, isn't it? Don't, be, don't hide behind. Who are they? Who are the big businesses? Who are mm. the big contacts there? And get out in and front just of attack them, them and, yeah, pi- and go pi- pi- pitch to them. Well, you know, attack might be a bit aggressive. No, but, but yeah, but, yeah, yeah so, but, but, but get, I mean? get in front of them and, and, and mm. talk about how you can help their business yeah, be yeah, better yeah. because I think what I've seen recently is for the first time in my 15-year career in recruitment is it's actually seen as a profession you know, I recruitment. Think, I, I honestly believe that. Do you yeah. think? I honestly do. Yeah, yeah. I think because of the challenges of people being able to recruit, mm. uh, and the you know the key part for any any the key challenge for any chief exec at the moment is recruitment. Really, it is. And, yeah. and you know, any statistic PwC did one. I'm not going to quote it because I don't know the exact figure. Mm. Where that was the biggest challenge for CEOs. The people part. Yeah. So if that's the case, and you're a recruiter, you can genuinely help people. Solve make their businesses better you know yeah, and that's yeah. what we're looking for we're looking for problems like that. that we can solve so i think the amount of times I've i think you've got used- i think you've got a couple that with like you've got to really believe in that you you can solve that problem as well do you know what i mean like you've got you clearly believe in yourself that i'm solving a real problem yeah i'm proud to be a recruiter i can help your business yeah whereas there will be a lot of people where obviously recruitment has such a bad name and recruiters are then they're not trusted people but a lot of that I think I, I don't know man. I, I don't, <laughs> I've got to defend the, the industry because I think the industry is I even listen to these podcasts mate I'll there's be, so much good, there's, there's so, so much, much quality out there yes, there is, yes, there's there some is real, totally there there's, is, some, totally. there's some real there's some poor practice out there and one of the things I remember from the recession is that that was the good thing that happened was the poor recruiters were straight out of the market. You, you, you don't survive in an, yeah, yeah. in a tough market as a poor recruiter, but I think there's some really high standards oh, agree. going on in the, mar- in the moment. But will we become regulated one day? Ooh. Would we? That'd be mad. Well, I've, well, you know, I, I went and got my qualification with the rec, and I think that we've got eight people in our business that did that. Really? What does that even mean, though? What does, can't what start mean? recording like phone calls and that. I remember. No, that I'm talking insurance. about I'm talking about being regulated where you have to be qualified with the rec or whatever the governing body is to be to, able to do the job. Yeah, that's interesting. So surely the you know everything is becoming regulated. I'm sure there's going to be a time in recruitment where that will happen in the next three to five do you years. Think? Well, <laughs> GDPR should have stopped some poor practices, but it hasn't. You know, you yeah, still yeah. got we've still got people in the market just firing out CVs. They haven't spoke to Standard. the candidate and stuff like that. You know, that still happens. But surely there's got to come a time where, yeah, th- there's got to be some regulation put in place. I'm not, you know, a lot of recruiters will, will listen to that and say, so oh, shut up, yeah, yeah. stop saying that. But it's going to come a point where that happens. And, and would, yeah, that be a, would that be a bad thing? I don't know. 
if if we're talking about the profession hasn't I, I think it, it is a better profession now but if we're talking about it not having that view in the marketplace would it be a bad yeah, thing yeah that i think that would definitely regulated? help i think yeah, that would definitely help would, yeah, for yeah. sure okay one thing i definitely wanted to to get your perspective of is um because you're clearly someone that has the humility to encourage people to be better than you and all these things so like i always like asking this like what what have been through your through your career what have been the the things that have prevented recruiters going from 250 a year to 350 to 450 like what have been the common habits or common things that you've seen that people breaking through to get to that that next level well, the, 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 the next level, I think we, our business, we've got, probably got three or four that are at that level. Okay. And and what's taken them up is having someone come in okay. that that push, that push suddenly sh- raised the bar. You know, we were at a business really? two years ago where um, we didn't think anyone could do more than a certain level of income in the markets that we operated at. And then suddenly someone came in that did, you know, 50% more than everyone else and everybody else raised as a result of it. Oh, so that's it's the, Have you heard the flea analogy? No. Right, so if you get a jar with yeah. some fleas in, yeah. put your hand over the top of it, the fleas don't jump above your hand when you move it. Okay. If you then put another flea in, yeah. that jumps above the, the jar, yeah. and then all the other fl- fleas follow it. Okay. So if you can get that, that consultant that comes in that's that okay, flea yeah. that jumps Well, it's like higher. the four-minute mile, isn't it? Well, yeah, if, if that, that's exactly what it is. So I think, yeah. you, you know, you need to find your flea, basically. So I think yeah. what stopped people from getting to that next level is believing that it's possible. Possible, yeah. Mindset. Yeah. I didn't think a million pounds was possible to start listening to these podcasts. Yeah, I really mad. didn't. You know, some of the people doing a million quid, I'm like, how, how are you doing that? Yeah, yeah. So suddenly my mindset's changed. It's right, if people are doing a million pounds, yeah, they can yeah. do that. I and was it's always, those stories that you tell yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I can only get, probably do another 250 this year. It's, it's the old thing, you need to see it to believe it, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So if I tell you that you can do a million pounds, it's, you know, difficult, but if, there's a guy that's sat next to us that's doing it. Yeah. Then, then people believe. So I think the thing that stops anyone from doing anything is the belief that they can actually do it. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, ultimately we can do anything, can't we? <laughs> you can have a go at anything. You can, but do, do you any, do, so that person then, obviously it's like, I'm sitting there and it's like, fucking hell, this guy's done 600K this year. Like, I don't yeah, even know yeah. that's possible, right? But were there anything, what, was he doing anything different? Do you know what I mean? Like, was there anything in there that you noticed? I was like, that's really interesting. Well, that- well this guy for us that's doing 600K, he's, he, again, um, I would say his name, but I don't know if he'd like that because he doesn't like yeah, that's fair enough, that's Yeah, fair yeah, enough, yeah. But, and also he might get head hunted. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, uh, you know, four, but he knows who he is. Um, but four or five years ago, you know, he had a really tough run, and he, and he, but he didn't change throughout that. He didn't change the way he operated, he didn't change the way he worked. And I think he had a year where he did like 50, 60 grand, you know, really, really, really poor year. But we knew he was a good recruiter. Yeah. And he kept doing the same things, but he believed in himself and he followed that same process and really? it worked and he built up his network. So that that's, you know, that's fantastic to see really. So he had the real structure. So he had the real and structure. He believed in this structure and he, his process. He did, but also he'd seen someone else come into the business that had done 500 and he then believed and he could see, because I don't think he'd seen that before. So he'd seen someone do it and then he started doing more of the things that he did well. Okay, so it's recognising yeah. the things that you do well. Yeah, what you do, do more well, doing more of it. And ultimately, the guy works longer hours than Does anybody, anybody else. You know, he, really? has, he has to because he's got to manage so many placements. So, yeah. But he's the guy that would be in the office till 10 o'clock. Really? He'd be the, and I'm talking about when he was doing 50 grand and that takes a lot of motivation to, when you're not doing well, what, he's, still in be there, he's in there till 10 and you're yeah, doing he's that? he's working late hours, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, yeah. So I think, and, and that's what I, I don't see as much anymore in recruitment. I used to see a lot of people working till eight, nine o'clock in the office. Yeah. yeah. You don't see that anymore because nah. everyone wants the culture. Everyone wants the niceness, agile work and all that sort yeah, of stuff. But yeah. listen, first two years, you were talking about what you did the first few years. Yeah. Work longer and harder yeah. than anyone else. Well, that's what I did and in my do second more, year. Do more than anyone else. That's You, you yeah, can talk yeah, about yeah. the science behind it and motivation and mentality and all that sort of stuff. But ultimately... The first two years you get into recruitment, yeah. you you work harder than anyone else. Yeah, you do twice as much as anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. real basic stuff, isn't it? It's yeah, now yeah, fifteen yeah. years. Because it's, 15 it's years the only recru- thing you can fucking control, yeah, isn't it? Of course it is. But fifteen years in recruitment, and what I'm coming at you is, my advice is work really hard. That's mm. not science, is it? Yeah. But yeah, ultimately, yeah. if you look at what these guys do, you can you can give all the the tools and all the different things you can do. But the guy that is our biggest biller is the one that does the most hours, and I don't think that's also a coincidence but he also mm. balances that th- with his life and all that sort of stuff so yeah um okay that's so, interesting yeah so so you know if you're doing a million pound you can't you can't no, no i like that I, f- I really like i think that's totally true 
um, someone just seeing someone around you raising the bar, realizing that they're no different to you and all that. That's yeah. that's such a game changer, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's a great thing about podcasts and all the information I have access to. It's like, well, hang on a minute, no, that person's done that. I can definitely do that. Yeah. But see, everyone is fascinated and wants. Okay, well. Well, how how long does he spend BDing or like how long does he spend sourcing or how does he structure his day do you know what I mean everyone wants that little that little secret or that little bit that's gonna they think is gonna help them get to yeah, that yeah well, I mean I mean that that is just working things that you know you're gonna, you're gonna make money off isn't it yeah yeah you know, I was, Simply. I, so, someone gave me something where I think so, there was a company where the, the, the job fill was 20% okay so you fill in one in five jobs that comes in yeah and the best analogy I had was if you're a plumber and you were going to do five jobs yeah. and you're only gonna get paid on one yeah, which one would you work on? You know, so so so, so but that's what we do, isn't it? We create, yeah, yeah. we spend a lot of time like, not getting paid, not yeah. getting paid for a lot of work that we do. Yeah, yeah. So you have to choose carefully the work that you take on and the work that you do f- based on the, the client relationship you've got. So I think yeah. that combined with hard work and then you know you, you can get yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Anything that you want to add? I really like that. Anything that you want to add on on the mindset piece? I feel like you've you've got your you're pretty switched on and well, do you know what I mean? Like do do, do you? Do you have open conversations about? I know you said you've got a mindset coach, all those things. Like, what, what did anyone speak about mindset when you started? Like, do you know what I mean? In the early, early years, I don't. Well, it was like, more in. Sp- I had it in sports. I think there's a lot of things that are happening in sports now that we can bring into business with yeah. sports science and a, yeah, lot of, yeah. a lot of good stuff. So I, I had it really in terms of mindset. My, uh, sorry, mindset. Yeah. But I think the challenge we've got now is, yeah. is there's a lot of talk around mental health yeah, and that yeah, sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. I think the biggest thing we need is education to people as to what mental health is oh I couldn't agree you more. know I mean That's why there, I, there's I, a lot of mental health awareness is great um, but there's also we, we're seeing a lot of people saying well I'm mentally unwell because something bad's happening in their life so I think you know we need to get to a point where there needs to be an education on what mental health is oh, I couldn't agree more. Um, and, and that, can, that can help with the mindset coaches because they talk to you about what you need to do to make yourself happy yeah. as well. So I think mindset coaches can help with the mental well-being and mental health as well. Yeah, what yeah. you need to do to make yourself mentally healthy. It's the same yeah, as going yeah, to the gym, yeah. isn't it, to make yourself fit. You know, you need to do the same sort of things on a daily basis to make you make sure your mind is fit and strong yeah, yeah, in the yeah. same way that you do with your body. No. So I think the mindset coach, I, I think, is is really, really important or certainly people understanding how the mind works because it's oh, blooming mate. complicated isn't it yeah so complicated um, we're, we're just fucking weirdos aren't we the we are weird. well we are well we can the mind the mind can easily tell you that you're a weirdo yeah, if you yeah, believe yeah. It, no yeah totally so, so it's understanding that oh mate no i couldn't i couldn't agree more that's why um i was really motivated to get some people on and talk about mental health because like yeah. now look I, I i i live on linkedin and spend a lot of time on there and i just i just feel like it's a very easy word to use now and i think at the same time it's it's dangerous, but it's great that people more people are talking about. It, but Absolutely, at the same time, yeah. it's like I don't know. I don't. I don't personally. I don't like it when people are. Oh, I had a really tough week. My mental health this week. Okay, well, yeah. what do you mean? Like, yeah, let, let's, yeah. We need a bit more context. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think there needs to be, as you said, an actual just education around it. Mm. So, because um, the more people that actually understand how their brain works and all these things, the, the better. Absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. For for the so mental health, I guess just going back, it's mm. for the for the good in terms of you know using your mind to make sure you believe that you can do yeah, 600 yeah, yeah. grand believe that you can go yeah. and talk to these CEOs mm. but also uh, to make sure you, that when, he, when you're getting these knockbacks from yeah. someone saying I'm not going to work with you that it doesn't mean that you're yeah, you know, no, that, that was going to be my next that's, 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 yeah. that's what I wanted to go in next before um, we start wrapping up mate like I, again I always ask people um, what topics they want me to go over and stuff like that and a real common one again is that resilient piece and I know you've gave a few stories and all those things you look for that in people and these things so like how do you some people as you said like that girl that started they just broke her heart and she couldn't deal with it I think there's got to be a bit of self-awareness to go you know what this isn't for me that's part of it but how do you really instill that resilience in people do you know what I mean that you've got to play a part to play in that a bit as well surely I, or not well I'm not sure you can really yeah I'm not sure you can so what do you, you do you, to do either, those shit you, days you, you, well that's what I'm saying so so you, you are that's how you how you brought up or what's mm. happened to you when you're in your early life or yeah, you know yeah. people have had the parents divorce or all these yeah, all yeah. these little things or big things that happen in your life that create that ability to overcome adversity mm. so that's why I look for it because I know that you could train it yeah I don't think you can train it when someone joins. If they haven't but got it. But if you're it, a manager and you know that that, per, that recruiter who has shown a bit of resilience in the past and is having a bit of a ship two months, three months, four months, yeah. what do you do? How do you get them to, do you know what I mean, push through resilience? How do you keep 
Well, get it ultimately, I can I can tell them that they've been through much worse in their life than that's happening at the moment, and they came back much stronger, and they're yeah. they're much better as a, as a result of it. Mm. So understand and ask people what they've learned from the bad experience. Yeah, you know, if if something's going wrong, what have you learned from it, and what are you going to do to change that and impact that moving forwards? Yeah, yeah. and I think if you just ask people questions, don't you? I yeah, think yeah. telling people sort no, yourself right. out you ask people questions so what have you learned from the, these three months forget yeah. about I know you're having a tough time you need to get them focusing on something else yeah, what, what have you learned what will you do differently next time yeah you know get people to enjoy the failure love uh, it yeah and that, that's 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 the thing if you can it's a really messed up mindset but if you can learn to enjoy your failures then every day will be okay in recruitment but do you do anything personally to help you like I always like asking it like <clears throat> any did you have form any habits to get through those shit times like don't know do yeah the, the habit is changing my mindset to see a failure okay, as yeah. a success yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. that's simple as that is yeah, right yeah. failure a lot of the time you, you think oh man I've done that wrong I'm terrible oh, da, 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 da. but if you look and go well, oh, what could I have done differently yeah, and, and that's what I messed up and that. next time when you're doing a deal or whatever's happening you 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 remember that failure and you you adapt and you do it differently. So yeah. so going back to what you say is just looking at my changing my mind to see a failure as yeah. a it's, it's, pers- it's perspective, isn't perspective. It's how you choose to view something. Mindset. Yeah, it yeah. all comes down to mindset. It yeah, all comes yeah. down to your viewpoint. Um, but you know we're in a we're in a great job that's you know really straightforward, isn't it? But it's the yeah. most difficult, simple job in the world, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Recruitment. Yeah. Um, but there's lots of different things. Just make sure you ad- you adapt to how you're working. Try and be better all the time, yeah. and don't get too carried away with successes or failures. Yeah, yeah. and try I think and that's big enough. Yeah, stay no, grounded, mate. That, stay grounded. No Rolexes, kids. Keep it real. That's what that, <laughs> that's what we're doing, Berlin, right, mate. Right before we finish, mate, um, I'd be keen to just get your thoughts on this because. Yeah, I really like how how um, how positively you're talking about the industry, and and, and that, that's a big part of why I started this. If I'm honest, like to give actually people real a real perspective into the industry, yeah. right? So where where do, where do you think recruitment's going over the next couple of years? I think it's how the most it? personally. I think it's the most exciting time for a while in recruitment. I think there's really? lots of. Uh, I think you've got an industry where the clients need you. Yeah. You know, so that's great. There's a yeah. need from clients, and there's a, a respect for what we do. Um, and for our profession and the way we operate, if you do it properly, um, and I think there's all the technology that's coming in place and yeah. all the, the, the you know, if you go to any of these events about what's happening with tech and AI and stuff like that, there's some really exciting stuff that's going to yeah. be happening in the industry. So I actually think it's a great time to be part of it. Yeah. Um, so I see it becoming more innovative, more creative. Uh, the firms that dare to be different will be the best ones. Yeah, totally. Um, and I, I think, think it's dare to be different and then also double down on those relationships and double down on fucking delivering for, for their clients and Absolutely. doing the best the, thing. The people that know their clients inside out and the ones that niche, you have to niche you got to niche, yeah. I wish we'd have done it sooner, we didn't, but all the people that I see, you know, our top three billers are the ones that have got the narrowest niche. Really? So actually, I used to think when you came into recruitment, if you had the biggest database, the most clients, yeah. the most candidates, that, that was, was the best one. Yeah. But actually, less is more. And I think mm. when you start to see that less is more and you niche down, that could um, be a game changer. You, you, it could be a game changer, but the industry is an exciting place to be. Nice, mate. So look, what? Uh, b- before I ask you the last question, mate, what, uh, what are you excited about in your world, mate? What is going on? What's going on in IDEX world, but, mate? At IDEX? Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about, excited about? I'm excited about the number of people we've got that are better than last year. Oh, uh, I'm excited. that's always good. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about um, the, the, the quality of client relationships we've got. And I'm excited that we're innovating and we're trying new things and we're going out and putting in technology that other firms haven't got. Mm. And we're, we're trying to... Daring to, to be different. Yeah, we're daring to be different and uh, we're observing the masses and doing the opposite. I like um, that. Which is, you know, I, th- I think, you know, if, if we're in a, a business that was stagnating and wasn't trying to be better or do things differently, then it'd be really boring. But we're doing that, which means that every day is different, every year is different. Um, and that's what it's about, isn't it? Nice, mate. So, um, last question. I thought the last one was the last question. No, no, this oh, one. Oh, this okay. one, mate. This one. Yeah. Um, you, so, yeah, you can answer it with a phrase, sentence. <laughs> if uh, if uh, you could uh, communicate to everyone, they'd listen to you, all the recruiters in the world, they'd listen to you, they'd take on your advice. What would you say? It could be a phrase, it could be a sentence. What have you got to say to these people that you really want them to listen to? <clears throat> Don't be a dickhead. I like that. Yeah. You're not the first person to say that. Am I? Oh, oh really? Oh, oh, I yeah. need to think something different. <laughs> but I think, yeah, the, I think, you know, there's a lot of the, the, the industry, the challenge we've got as an industry, there, there are a number of those because yeah. they get carried away with their own success. So, so don't get carried away with your own success. 
I like it. Yeah, don't be a dickhead's better, yeah, but someone be else is using it. Don't be a dickhead. Yeah. No, I like it. Look, it's right. been an absolute pleasure, mate. Wicked, mate. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thanks a lot.